the way we consume and share news today it is largely rooted in social media. Oh, that's the reason why I decided it's important to look at what's being discussed online. From the hottest issues to trends, oh, even from K-Classic. For a daily social media minute, we're joined by Yerika. Good morning. Good morning. And that is a thing, K-Classic. Putting K in front of everything. <laughs> I'm just going to let it run its course. Eventually, we'll figure it out. Yep. Maybe there's a better way to go about it. But nonetheless, yes, K-Classic is in the spotlight. And even if you're not a big classical music fan, it's okay. That's why Yerika's here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, South Korea is seriously on a roll. We recently talked about how uh, South Korean cellist Che Hyung won the first prize at the 2022 Queen Elizabeth competition for cello in Brussels. Mm-hmm. This time, it's the Van Cliburn competition, which mm-hmm. is among the most prestigious classical music competitions in the world. Yeah. And I have to say, a star was born. He's very young, and he was just, he reigned supreme at this competition that's dubbed the Olympics of piano. Yeah. A lot of celebration, a lot of focus. He was triple crowned, from what I understand. Yes. So a day after receiving the largest standing ovation, 18-year-old Im Yun Chun was crowned the winner of the 2022 Van Cliburn International Piano Competition in Fort Worth, Texas. He is the youngest ever winner of the gold medal at the Cliburn. Where do you go from here? I know, right? <laughs> uh, again, 18. Yeah. He's so young. He, the the two other competitors who took the silver and bronze, respectively, was uh, 31 one-year-old Russian pianist Anna Jushin and uh, the bronze medal winner was a 28-year-old Ukrainian pianist Dmitro Goni. Given the circumstances yeah. and geopolitical issues that's happening in Ukraine, that does seem significant. Yes, uh, the Clyburn competition actually has officially condemned the war, but they decided to right. accept uh, Russian competitors okay. this year okay. because they said, you know, this is nothing political. Yeah. These pianists, they're not supporting the Russian war. Right. They're not sponsored by the state. No, These honestly, are just artists. Erica, we We've talked about this, I think, several times yep. on your segment. Not all Russians support the war in Ukraine. Correct. And we should be able to make the distinction between the war, who is led by Russian politicians, namely yes. Putin. And then there are people who live in Russia mm-hmm. who would rather be outspoken against the war. Yes. So I think separating art from what's happening geopolitically, that's important, too. Yes. Uh, so he's won, uh, Im Yun-chan won yeah. three awards, actually, three uh, prizes. His winning performance was uh, Beethoven's Piano Concerto Number no. 3 in C minor and my goodness his stunning performance of Rachmaninoff's Piano Concerto Number no. 3 in D minor. He was also awarded the Audience Choice Award yeah. and the Jury Discretion Award for Best Performance of a New Work. So it's not just I guess the old school classic if you will mm. he's capable of so much more and there is so much to celebrate at this competition alone yes. if you don't know just type Im Yun Chan and you'll get all of the highlights. There's a video uploaded onto YouTube uh, which shows the entire performance yeah. of you know him playing a uh, money off and uh, it's just it, it brought tears to my eyes really and you can see the conductor she's conducting and she's you can see her wiping away tears because she's so moved look at that yeah. look what classical music can do and uh, as soon as he finished performing yeah. the, the audience literally <sighs> erupted they were on their feet applauding and oh my goodness it's just so impressive it's very clear that everyone in that room shared the same emotion yeah. and that's that's powerful and I can't remember the last time I went to performance to witness something like that. Exactly and you know world renowned critics Mm -hmm. said this was not an 18 year old kid performing in a competition this was a performance of a lifetime many of them said. (laughs) Yeah. High praise. Yes. High praise absolutely. So as we mentioned he's a pretty young pianist 18 years young. Uh, What are his plans for the future Im Yun Chan? (laughs) I do wonder. (laughs) That's a good question. He said that he will have to wait until he returns to Korea to decide what to do with every everything included in the first prize award. This is what he said. I am still a student and I feel like I have a lot to learn still. This is a great competition and I feel the burden of receiving this great honor and award. So I will just push myself to live up to the honor I received today. And he will discuss with his teacher, you know, what he's going to do moving forward. Now, he's currently studying at the Korean National University of Arts under Professor Son Min Soo. And his first international recognition was uh, after winning the second prize and the Chopin Special Award at the Cleveland Mm -hmm. International Piano Competition for Young Artists back in 2018. And that was his first international Mm -hmm. competition. And this is a big second honor, it seems. Uh, Tell us about the competition itself that happened in Texas. Yes, uh, 
the Van Cliburn International Piano Competition was first held in 1962 in Fort Worth to mm-hmm. honor Van Cliburn, who won the first international Tchaikovsky competition back in 1958. And the competition is held every four years. Okay. It's like the Olympics. It, it is like the yeah, Olympics. The latest event was supposed to be held last year, but was postponed due to COVID-19. Of course. Yes. All right. So there you have it. The Clyburn uh, 2022 started with 30 competitors. Yeah. This Korean pianist reigns supreme over all of them. That's so exciting, I think. Exactly. And this is just the start of his career. I feel like we'll be hearing a lot more about him in the future. Lee min Chan is a name uh, to remember, to pencil, yes. <laughs> to keep track of if he returns to Korea and decides to have concerts. There mm. is one coming up in October, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I guess, a no-brainer. Yeah. Uh, riding high off with the success of, of the course. competition. Why wouldn't you want to meet the fans up close yeah. and personal? And just FYI, too. because we yeah. are Social Media Minute, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Clyburn 2022 webcast broke previous streaming records with a global online audience of over 9 million people following the competition from more than 170 countries. Who said classical music is niche? I know. It's apparently not, yep. guys. <laughs> 9 million people streaming yes. at the same time. Yep. That's impressive. It is. All right, K-Classic here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> On to our second buzzword this morning. So if you've ever been worried about children and teenagers being exposed to undesirable contents online, it seems like there's another app that can notify parents of possible digital sex crimes. That's right. The Korea Communications Commission announced on Sunday that it's going to distribute a smart safe dream smartphone application that is equipped with the latest function, which notifies parents of illegal videos or perhaps indecent text messages on their children's social media. I wonder how the app works. Yeah, the app feature was recently added to this already existing app to prevent cyber verbal violence with its digital sex crime prevention functions. Mm -hmm. And using the app, parents can delete illegal and harmful videos Mm -hmm. from their children's smartphones. Uh And they will also receive notifications if keywords related to digital sex crimes are used on their social media. So uh, when a perpetrator lures a child on social media to meet in person or tries to send illegal videos, Mm -hmm. a notification is sent to parents so they can respond immediately. I'm hoping it relies on an algorithm so it can kind of, you know, outsmart potential perpetrators. I mean, they're getting smarter with the way they oh, approach yeah. children, right? They're trying to get more discreet. Yes. As if it's so sort of normalize the crimes even. Mm-hmm. But anyway, this is one other sort of safeguard defense mechanism That's against right. these possible perpetrators. Yes. So users who already have yeah. this app installed on their phones, they can use it immediately after updating the app. Okay. And new users can, of course, download the app and start using it right away. All right. I, we can't perfect the system overnight, but we do need Need certainly these yeah. barriers. Children and teenagers are frequent targets of sex crimes and unlike adults, um, they might have difficulty recognizing as a crime or how to deter it even. It's difficult to directly cope with perpetrators Correct. if they seem to be an authoritative figure. Yeah. So the initial response by adults and a timely one yep. and a timely intervention is Very extremely important. important. Yes. Digital sex crimes, by the way, refer to various yeah. sex crimes that violate other people's sexual autonomy and personal rights in cyberspace. These include filming and distribution of illegal videos intimidation and grooming of children and adolescents as well as sexual harassment obviously and yeah. luring children into meeting them. Okay, so keeping up with our children and teenagers, it seems to be really important that adults intervene in a timely fashion. Yes. It's I can't believe this is a world we live in, but we adapt, don't we? Yeah. All right, on to our final buzzword of the day. It's hot. It's humid. It's yeah. only June. But what can you do? You find solace near the beaches and in the mountains. What did you do over the weekend, I didn't by the way? Do anything. You didn't do anything? I cleaned the house and then I called it a day and I realized uh-huh. I, had, I hadn't used my vocal cords all the weekend long. And when I came in this morning, I was having trouble kind oh. of brushing them up again. <laughs> Good morning. It was very muggy, it was I muggy. have to say, over the weekend. It was kind of tough to, you know, even take my dog for a walk. Uh-huh. But it's only the beginning, isn't it? it really People are sharing the sentiment it's hot and humid. Yes, and beaches, mountains, and all manner of tourist attractions across the country saw huge crowds of early vacationers trying to cool off, trying to beat (laughs) the early summer heat. It reached up to like 29 degrees, 30 degrees yesterday here in Seoul. And it was sticky. Yes. And of course, Jeju-do is one of the most popular destinations here in South Korea. The Mm. beaches on Jeju-do Island were bustling with visitors. Mm. Island also hosted an international marathon event. 
oh. over the weekend. It attracted 3,500 participants. All right. So that must have been fun. Um, the beaches <laughs> along Korea's famed East Coast were also busy. People were seen boating. Mm. They were surfing. Surfers, of course, they were flocking to Yangyang. People just splashing around in water. You know, honestly, because I've been to Yangyang maybe yeah. a few times, and the waters are easy enough for novice surfers uh-huh. to brave. It's oh. not that tough. Okay. No, no. Okay. <laughs> um, the coastal roads along Heunde down south were so packed with both people and cars. It looked like, I don't know, the scene of a summer vacation season at its peak. It's June. It's only June. No, we're only getting started. Yes. Uh, the West Coast, less famous for its beaches compared to the East Coast, sure. but uh, the West Coast was no exception. Saw plenty of visitors. Yongjongdo, Urangni, and Wangsan beaches saw throngs of weekenders enjoying the fresh air by the beach. All the major mountain attractions. We, you know, we love to hike. We're Koreans. <laughs> packed with hikers. Water parks, amusement parks, folk villages, national parks across the country. Again, filled with uh, weekenders. The introvert in me is introverting even further into a super <laughs> introvert mode. <laughs> this is tough. I'm running out of places to go over the weekend. You know, we're talking about early summer heat and the news pouring out of Europe. It's a little bit crazy. It's like 43 degrees in Madrid. It's virtually unheard of. Yeah. And the problem is this is way too early for these kinds of extreme conditions to unfold, which is a perfect segue into our world news segment today. Uh-huh. Thank you for saying <laughs> the show, Erica. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.